Yeah, hello everyone. Yeah, right now I'm not sure that uh, someone can hear us. So please write down something. <laughs> Okay, good. Someone wrote that they can see us and hear us. Yes, that's, that's great. That's great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. Awesome, thanks. Uh, so we'll be starting and uh, we're so happy to see everyone. And uh, my name is Ala. I am in charge of marketing and dev-to-dev. -dev. And uh, with us today is our customer success manager, Anastasia Sukhanova, who will guide all of us through creating the best optimal event structure for dev to dev and uh, if you want to gain a deeper understanding of event analytics and get the most potential of dev to dev uh, you're in the right place today and uh, we'll walk through events uh, creating event structure and leveraging user properties for deeper insights together with Anastasia today during the webinar. Uh, we're recording this webinar, so now we're live, and you'll get the recording as a follow-up after the webinar sometime next week. And uh, feel free to write down the questions, and uh, we will answer them after the presentation, after the main session. So you'll have a chance to have a Q&A session with Anastasia. And uh, let's start. Yeah, uh, again, hello everyone. And I also have a pinned message in the chat. So you can check it because we have here useful links. And also you can see here um, a link to, uh, to book a call with me if you have some additional questions. Also, I'll send my email in the chat because uh, someone could have additional questions. So yeah, feel free to write me on my email. And yeah, uh, I guess we can start. Okay, so um, today we'll talk about um, how to create an optimal event structure. Um, this topic is very important because uh, the quality of your project's analysis will largely depend on how well you design the event structure. Uh, the better you can use this uh, events to make data-driven decisions, the more effective your analysis will be. So this webinar will be useful for users who already use dev to dev and want to gain new insights into events, um, as well as learn some specific about um, working with them in dev to dev uh, to, to improve uh, their processes. And also it will benefit those who are currently in the process of um, designing events uh, for, for their projects. And another important point today, uh, uh, I will not cover the theoretical basics of what an event is uh, to save time. Um, as uh, most of you probably already know these basics. Um, however, if you are interested in learning this, um, we have a link in dev to dev webinar in the pinned message uh, where I um, explain what an event is and why it is needed. So, uh, yeah, but for now we won't dig into that and we will move on to our webinar. So, um, here's our plan for today. I'll start by discussing whether a project needs many events and if it should track every action. Uh, next, we'll talk about the approach to creating a, an event structure and we'll go through the um, necessary steps. After that, I'll show you how to maintain an event list to hand over to the developer for integration. Um, then I'll talk a bit about user properties and we'll look at what uh, basic dev to dev events are. Um, and finally, I'll explain our limits and how to test events to ensure uh, everything is working correctly. So yeah, let's get started. So the first topic uh, I want to discuss is how many events a project should have. There are two extremes here. Uh, the first is when there are almost no events or only a few basic ones but uh, there are not enough to make 
informed decisions. Uh, there simply won't be enough data. Uh, and to avoid this, many teams swing to other extreme uh, and tag every small action with events. This means an event could be generated for every screen visit, every small action. And um, sometimes we talk with clients who generate uh, millions of events for a relatively small project. And as a result, they face several problems. First, they can't analyze the data because there is too much of it and making um, decision making difficult. Uh, another issue is that some systems charge uh, based on the number of events sent. So they may um, they might end up uh, paying for a large amount of data that uh, isn't even used. And lastly, there there is the time spent by developers. So the more events they are, the longer it takes to integrate them. And the ideal scenario is to find uh, a balance uh, and not reach these extremes. Um, and how to achieve this will be discussed next. So um, how to create event structure. And the first step is to formulate the questions we want to answer. Uh, for this, gather all the stakeholders who will be using the system. Um, then hold the brainstorming session to discuss what data will be needed. Uh, it's the best to start with the questions you want to answer or the task, uh, tasks you need to solve. Um, you can see an uh, example of questions on the slide. It's also important that each team member understands what they will do uh, with the answer to a particular question. Uh, for example, a product manager wants to know when users start paying, meaning that they ask this question knowing what they will do with this information later. Um, if, um, for example, someone asks, uh, when do users turn off the sounds uh, in the game? Um, it's a valid question, but they also need to understand what they will do with this information. And let's look at this question and pick one to consider from, um, from the perspective of a product manager, uh, thinking about um, what can be done with the answer. Uh, for example, let's take the question, uh, what motivates users to make a purchase? Um, in this case, we will know uh, the flow um, a user goes through before making a purchase. Uh, we might identify problem areas where users don't complete a purchase. Maybe the user has to take too many steps or um, doesn't understand how to make a purchase. And summarizing this, um, if we can answer this question and understand the purchase flow, we can adjust this path, um, make it more convenient and um, ultimately um, increase uh, the conversion rate to payment. And another example is the, uh, the question, um, what is the user's lifetime? Uh, let's say we are game designers who want this information. With it, we can segment users and, for example, offer promos based uh, on their lifetime. For example, we could offer significant discounts to non-paying users uh, with a high uh, lifetime. So um, the main idea here is that we initially think uh, not about the events, but about the information we want to obtain. Um, and once we have formulated the questions, we can move on to the events. Uh, so this is step two, where we need to define the key event and its um, surrounding events. And let's uh, revisit the question we discussed earlier, what motivates a user to make a purchase? Um, we need to identify the key action, which will be uh, the first event we track. Um, in this case, it's a purchase. Then we should uh, list the surrounding events. Uh, in the context, uh, it could include 
um, opening a game store or viewing a product card. And prior to this, it might include onboarding as a user cannot make a purchase without uh, completing it. And there may be other actions specific to your game or app um, that you'll need to add. Uh, we can also include um, events like a, a failed purchase attempt. Yeah. Um, and the second example uh, here is the question, um, what is the rate of success, uh, successful uh, attempts to finish in-game missions? Um, so the key event will be um, mission finished. And to know um, the conversion rate, uh, we'll need... Uh, another event, it's uh, mission started. Okay, and um, after deciding uh, on the information we need uh, and the events, uh, we need to name these events uh, and here are some tips. And these rules can vary from company to company. So these are just the basic recommendations that you can choose to follow or not. Uh, firstly, it's element plus action approach. Uh, it's commonly used. This means taking an uh, object and adding the action uh, performed on it. For example, this could be uh, shop open, item view, bonus received, mission started, quest started, card view, and so on. We also recommend using underscores as it makes the data more um, readable in exports, but it's completely optional. Um, you can name it without underscores. It's up to you and your team. And another option is the screen element action approach, where you add the screen where the, the action occurs. For example, order form view uh, refers to viewing the form on the order screen. Um, however, if you have many screens, it's better to record the screen as an event parameter. And we'll talk about parameters next. So finally, use um, consistent format for event names. Uh, this include language, case, and underscore. Um, for example, if you decide to use only lowercase, ensure all events are named in lowercase. Um, these simple rules will help you quickly and easily navigate in events and now know how to name new events when uh, adding them. Um, okay, so after naming the events, we need to add parameters to them. Um, parameters are characteristics of the action and provide additional details. For example, in the case of purchase event, we need to add inform, uh, important information for analysis. Um, this could include the purchase amount, currency, and, and the product itself, its uh, ID or name. And without this data, we cannot properly analyze payment data. Uh, we can also add additional parameters such as um, where the purchase was made from, the store or a pop-up screen, for example. And um, why uh, is it important to use parameters? So on the slide, we have an example with a purchase. In one case, we send a single event with parameters, uh, knowing that um, the user bought a chest for um, $12 from the store. In the second case, we send two events, that a chest was bought and something was bought from the store. And we strongly advise against this approach for two reasons. The first ones, the first one, we uh, we won't be able to link these two events and understand that the chest was bought from the store, uh, making further analysis uh, difficult. Secondly, remember the limits on the number of unique events. If we send separate events for each purchase. Uh, user bought a chest, user bought a booster, user bought a hero, etc. Uh, we will quickly exceed the, the allowable event limit. And um, to support approach with parameters, um, let me give you another example. Yeah. Um, 
suppose we have two events uh, one for placing an order in the food delivery app <clears throat> and another for uh, the delivery for the delivery of that order so it's order delivered event here you see all the parameters on the screen and with these two events uh, enriched with parameters just two events we can answer many questions examples include how long users wait for their orders uh, how the order size correlates with the tip size and more you can see it in the screen so uh, in conclusion adding parameters to events is necessary to enable more uh, detailed data analysis and um, once we have prepared the events and added parameters we need to integrate these events into the project and often the question arises uh, about how to integrate them so next we'll discuss how to describe the events and um, hand them over to the developer um, and, and how to maintain an events map. And let's use our earlier example of understanding what leads a user to make a purchase. Um, we already have a set of events ready, so you can see it on the screen. Um, so this is how our events uh, list can look like. Um, and what column we have here? The first one is event name. It's, it's for the name of event. The second one is a trigger. And this column indicates um, when the event should be sent. Without this information, uh, the developer might uh, integrate the event incorrectly or not as intended. Uh, for example, the event for opening the store uh, should be sent when the user opened the store and so on. Uh, the third one is uh, event parameters. Here we list our parameters with uh, example values and a brief description of what each parameter means. For example, um, in the store opening event, we have a source parameter uh, indicating where the user came from to reach the store. Um, possible values could be the main screen or the scenario where the user ran out of the resources. Um, providing example values help the developer understand the format in which the parameter should be sent. Um, so the source will be a string value indicating the place name, uh, while the player level will be uh, a numeric value, and so on. With this information, the developer can integrate the events properly. Um, the next column is purpose. This column is optional and not necessary for integration. Um, a product manager can use it to note what they intend to do with this event. For example, as we see here in shop open and item view, um, it might be needed to build a funnel uh, leading up to the purchase or to see what motivates uh, the user to enter the store. Uh, and maintaining such a table is not difficult. It, it doesn't contain too much information, but uh, if you have one, then uh, your developer can, can integrate the events correctly. And um, if a new team member joins, they can quickly see what events exist and their purposes. Um, also, the product manager can always refer back to the table to to refresh their memory. Okay, and now um, that we have covered events, let's discuss user properties. And first, let's clarify the difference between parameters and uh, user properties. Um, so uh, an event is an action and a parameter is tied to that action. All these actions are performed by users and each user has characteristics or properties. Um, unlike parameters, properties are not tied to an action, but to the user. For example, it's a user's country, device, app version, etc. 
And many of these properties are tracked automatically, so they don't need to be sent separately. Some examples include install date, number of payments, uh, paying status, whether it's paying or non-paying, time zone, and so on. And we strongly recommend reviewing what data is automatically tracked and counted uh, before integration to, to avoid redundant work and save events and user property limits. You can check the properties in the user's profile as shown in the attached screenshot. Um, in addition to what is automatically tracked, uh, you can also send custom properties, um, which can be useful for analysis. Um, example include uh, rating, goals, interesting, uh, interest, uh, etc. And I have a small um, example for you. Let's consider um, a non-gaming uh, app such as a fitness app. And I have made a screenshot from our system so you can understand how properties can be used in reports. So uh, let's get back to the fitness app. Um, during onboarding, user might be asked about their fitness goals. Uh, lose weight, gain weight, or maintain current weight. This goal can be sent um, as a user property to understand which uh, workouts are chosen by users aiming to gain weight. Uh, while this information could be sent as an event parameter, uh, but doing so would require sending the parameter with every event, uh, multiplying the number of data. But in case with custom user property, it only needs to be sent once and we can use it later as a filter or to create segments. As you may see um, on the screen, we just chose uh, the gain weight value of the, um, uh, of the goal fitness custom user property as a filter to find out what fitness classes these users prefer. So it's, it's pretty easy. Um, and talking about automatically tracking things, we also have a basic events which can uh, significantly simplify the events creation process. So, um, yeah, we have um, a set of basic events. That these are predefined, predefined events with uh, ready-made parameters and descriptions uh, of when to send them. They cover key actions in, in the app or a game such as payments, onboarding, level completion, and so on. And based on these events, we create a large number of ready-made reports, including um, payment analytics, conversion to payment, um, user level completion data, successful and unsuccessful attempts, onboarding conversion, and more. And I have highlighted on the slide that the entire smart view section uh, is built on the on the basic events listed uh, there. And um, by integrating these basic events, you can assess numerous pre-built reports. Uh, therefore, before defining your custom event structure, we recommend considering these existing events. Uh, they might suit your needs, saving you from having to integrate additional custom events. Uh, but we always say that uh, every project is unique. So to get data on your unique features, it's better to use custom events. And I have also highlighted uh, on, on the picture that mainly we work in reports section with uh, custom events. Here we can find different visualizing options like funnels, charts, uh, etc. Um, okay, and finally, let's discuss limits and testing, starting with limits. Um, yeah. Um, so the main ones are on the slide. And uh, the most important is that you can't have more than 300 custom events. And each uh, event can't have more than 20 parameters. Uh, additionally, there is a limit on the number of unique um, string values, which can't exceed uh, 50 thousands, 
Um, therefore, we do not advise sending IDs or timestamps as string parameters, as uh, you will quickly hit the limit. Uh, besides, the event timestamp is recording um, automatically. And after we have integrated everything, we need to check. Uh, we need to check uh, if everything is being sent correctly. Um, this can be done directly in the interface, in Dev2Dev -Dev interface. And yeah, give me a second. Um, I need to share my screen. Okay, I need to find. Okay, I hope you can see my screen. So uh, we need to go to the user section and find um, our user, for example, your device. You can do this um, using the filter if you know the user ID or if you're just um, integrated and only have a few users here, make, it, it would be easy to find your user. So let's go ahead and select any user for now. Yeah, let's pick this one. Okay, great. Uh, we are in the user's card. Here you can mark uh, the user as a tester, which will exclude their data from the statistics. Uh, we recommend doing this for your device so that your actions don't affect analytics. And in this card, we see the user's event log. You can view which event have been sent, when they were sent, and what parameters each event had. Um, additionally, if the player has many events, you can use the filter to find um, the necessary event. Uh, or you can highlight events you want to focus on. Yeah, and um, we can also assume that the developer integrated an event with um, an incorrect name or a typo, uh, and we can fix, uh, fix this without uh, the developer's help by uh, going to the integra integration section in tuning. Yeah, we need to go to custom events configuration. Yeah, uh, here you can find, you need to find the problematic event and add an alias. And after this, um, the custom reports will display it with a new name. Uh, so that's everything I wanted to share today. I hope you find it useful. Um, so yeah, and let me know if, you, if there are any other topics you'd like to discuss in, in next webinars? Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Anastasia. And uh, we have a question already. Uh, is okay. there a way to check if some event stopped coming to the system? Um, yeah, uh, I uh, I guess I need to to share yeah. my screen again. We probably need to show tuning section. Yes, one second. I'll do this again. Okay. Uh, so the one way, the one option you can uh, create an alert uh, to your custom event you're interested in. So you can um, uh, find here your uh, custom events. You need to check uh, to choose number of custom events. Uh, choose your custom event and add a condition uh, when you want to receive an alert. So you can send alert if the number of custom events uh, suddenly drops for example, so this is the way how you can check it. And I actually think you, you can check it in the um, custom events overview because here we have um, number 
of events uh, for for the period so you can check some particular day for example or last seven days and so on so you can check if the number uh, is okay i hope i, I have answered your, your questions I, I i think so too um okay there was uh-huh do you have a chance to change the metric for for cohort analytics, for example, from first purchase to first day of subscription. Uh, if you could clarify, maybe we. Like, yeah, yeah I, because I'm, I'm. Mm, yeah, I'm not really. Do, do you mean? <laughs> do you mean to change the metric for cohort analytic the the event? Oh, like renaming the metric? Maybe like what what it's meant is uh, can you can you rename uh, the metric and give it another name? You could definitely re rename funnel steps. Not yeah, sure okay. That yeah, works. actually, yes. Uh, you can rename funnel step in the funnel section. Um, yeah, and maybe it's about our court section, but I'm not sure. So. Um, if you could clarify, I guess, yeah, <laughs> or like we we can we can we can have a quick call for ten minutes after the webinar. Yeah, you you can actually book a call with me, or yeah, we we, we can go through your question in in our demo uh, one to one, for example. Okay, uh, we have another question. Um, how can I use events in order to grow my projects? What are the main events that I must work on primarily? Mm, I would say you need to work not on events, but on your metrics. Uh, and to work on these metrics, you need to prepare an event list to, to, to grow your metrics. Uh, so, um, yeah, it, it largely depends on the type of the projects, um, I mean, what events you should use. But uh, if you have a game, you can refer to our basic events because it's like it's like a basis uh, you can start with. Uh, and yeah, we have lots of uh, ready reports that will help you, and you you will see the. Um, information without uh, necessity to, to build it by yourself. So you can start with this. Also, we have um, in the documentation, we have a uh, best practices page uh, where we have different custom events examples uh, on different types of projects. So my advice also check it. <laughs> yeah, so, so you can check it also. And maybe you can find some custom events which suits your needs. So, yeah. Uh, okay, I have a clarification about uh, about the previous question. Uh, sometimes we need to see the cohort for users with first day of subscription. Can we see the, this cohort in your app? Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, I need to think of it. Uh, I guess so, but I um, maybe I, I'll spend too much time showing it in the demo. I guess we can uh, reach out to to you after the call, and I maybe will send you the screenshot or um, description of uh, how it can be done. Yeah, because you can create a segment, for example, and filter it our reports, and yeah. Well, so you can create a segment. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, like it's uh, yeah, it's still not not one hundred percent clear. Like, but uh, in theory, you can take a retention report and take uh, the purchasing uh, event as the like as the refund event and then you'll see which like when when users are making purchases if that makes sense so okay well, i understand you answered as well so
So I guess oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, can I somehow check the snapshot of user data at the moment when they made event, for example, when they buy something? Uh, as far as I understand, you want to see the um, user um, correct properties in the moment of the purchase, as far as I understand. So actually, yeah, you can check it because we um, track uh, some um, properties and events automatically uh, to the event. So yeah, actually I can uh, show you the example. It's like five seconds. I'll share my screen again. Um, let's check it in the um, SQL section as we see here the, the, the structure. Yeah, we need to choose some event, some custom event, I guess. Yes, Carol, uh, you have a card. Yeah, we have, for example, add friend example of event here. And uh, all custom things started with underscore. And uh, yeah, all these properties is tracked automatically, uh, starting from the IDs, of course, event time, app version, country, device, even level, if you send to level up event and so on. So uh, yeah, you, you can check these properties uh, for the event in the moment of event that we were sent. So if I hope, I answered your question, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I get, yes. OK. <laughs> <laughs> so great. Awesome. So I guess that's it for the questions. And uh, yeah, you'll, you'll get the follow up uh, next week. And uh, feel free to contact. Uh, us via Calendly, contact us for more Anastasia shared your email if you have any questions uh, about uh, about the event structure. So hopefully see you next time and thank you Anastasia for a great presentation and thank you guys thank for you, being with us and for Q&As. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys. Bye bye. Have a great day. Bye.